This is brought to you by the Location One Building, 1734 East 63rd Street. When you invest in your community, you're really just investing in yourself. Carlos Nelson with Cascade Sports, and today uh, we have uh, the athletic director at UMKC. Who do we have here? Well, first off, Mr. Nelson, I really appreciate you having me um, on this show. I think it's critically important for uh, the folks uh, in the urban core throughout Kansas City to know me and know my story. And um, just to talk about myself, um, I'm from South Central Los Angeles. Um, you know, Go was, back to, 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 to your childhood and, 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 and come up to where you're at. Yeah, so um, at seven years old, my parents were divorced. Um, you know, my, my father uh, primarily raised me. My dad worked for the Los Angeles Times for 28 years in transportation. Um, you know, I'm first generation. Um, my dad taught me core values of, of hard work, um, endurance, uh, and toughness. And um, he positioned me for success because uh, he steered me away from gang activity. Um, we lived in a drug infested environment. Um, I have family members who were um, involved in both drugs and gangs. And for him, that was unacceptable. And um, he stayed on me. And one of the things that he told me was he sent me college going messages. And um, in that, you know, a lot of times parents teach us what they know. And one of the things he knew was that if I went to college, I would have a chance to elevate and advance in society. I was blessed with a, a basketball talent. My dad sent me to a, a, a basketball. It was, a, it was Magic Johnson's basketball camp when I was seven years old. And he also sent me to John Wooden uh, basketball camp. I only say that to say is that he took his hard earned money for me to learn the fundamentals of basketball and motivate me um, to want to pursue basketball. Now, the benefit of that is that fast forward 10 years later, I was um, a top 30 basketball prospect um, from LA. I was LA City Player of the Year back what in What high school did you go to? I graduated from Washington Prep High School, um, where we play right in the heart of the city. Um, I started at Cleveland High School. My dad wanted me to get about 30 miles away from where we lived. So I was bused to Cleveland High School, which was in Reseda, California. Um, but my final year was at Washington High School, where I was already All-American, and I averaged 31 points a game my final year. What um, position you play? I, I was a combo. I was a combo guard. I was sort of like a, a Chauncey Billups type uh, player. Uh, I could play the one, the two. Uh, that was 30 pounds ago now, okay? So a mm -hmm. <laughs> long time ago. So I could get to the spots on the floor uh, a lot better than I could now. But I was recruited by some of the top schools in the nation. Um, I was recruited by uh, Arizona back when Lute Olson was there, uh, George Raveling uh, at SC, Cal. Um, and uh, KU actually. And so what was important to me was I wanted to attend a university that, that was going to make me uh, more pro uh, prosperous uh, when I was 30, 40, um, not 50 yet, but, um, you know, when I was later on in life, uh, what school would position me for success? That was point one. Point two is that George Raveling was the first intellectual that I was exposed to. And he just so happened to be African-American. And that was, that was critically important for me. It 
was impressionable. Um, and USC was 12 minutes from where I lived. So if I can go to one of the best universities uh, in the nation, I could play for an African-American coach and I could get equipped with the skills necessary for me to be successful, not only in basketball, but uh, in, in my post-basketball life. Uh, that's why I made that decision to attend USC. Was he one of your uh, major mentors as, as a young adult? <clears throat> no question about it. Uh, one of the things that you know about George Ravening is that he's the Renaissance man. And he's a huge reader. And he gave me a book. Uh, think and Grow Rich. Ha! All of us have read that. Think and Grow Rich, but it was the book that Dennis Kimbrough wrote, A Black Perspective. And he gave me that book when we were in Seattle, uh, getting ready to play the University of Washington. And he said, Brandon, if you read this book, it'll change your life forever. And so I devoured the book um, in like a week and started to apply those principles at the age of 18. And I still apply those, those principles now. Uh, so uh, what brought you to, Can had you been in the Kansas City area and how did you become uh, athletic director <laughs> over there at UMKC? Tell our audience. Yeah, yeah, well, I was familiar with, with Kansas City. Um, I worked for, uh, the University of Oklahoma for three years for one of the best athletics directors in, in the nation, Joe Castiglione. And I frequented uh, Kansas City because we played in the, in the Big 12 tournament. So I, had, I was familiar with Kansas City, uh, not in much depth, but I was always impressed that it was just uh, uh, such a passionate sports town. Um, but what More brought, Final Four is played here than any other place in the country. That's right. That's right. And, and, and the, the college basketball experience is, is uh, one of the first places that I took both of my kids down to see that. So How many kids do uh, you have? I think I have, I have three. I have three. I have a daughter that attends Arizona State University now. She's back home with us due to this, this pandemic. Um, I have a 10-year-old daughter. Her name is Riley. She's, uh, she's a tremendous volleyball uh, player. She plays for the Mavs out in Olathe. Um, and my son, Brandon, is, is uh, seven. So I have, I have three children. All right. So as we talk about the journey to, to Kansas City, um, I just want to start by saying I worked at the University of, of Southern California for Mike Garrett. Mike Garrett was the athletics director then. Um, he was the first person who gave me my first shot. And he was my first mentor. Um, and so uh, that Interrupting was- Interrupting you a little bit. What do you think the most important thing that you took away from his mentorship uh, with you? Courage, toughness, um, being unpopular um, and learning how to compete professionally. And it's different, you know, competition, yeah, there's some similarities competing on a basketball court, but when you're competing um, professionally, um, it, it's a little different and it takes a lot more strategy and tact and diplomacy in order to do that. So from 2000 to 2010, I worked for, for Mr. Garrett. Uh, that was back when we, were, we had the dynasty uh, with Pete Carroll, Ed O'Dron, and, and back when Lane Kiffin and all those guys, uh, Kennedy Pola, uh, we, we, had it, we had it going. And we won two national championships. And uh, that's where I cut my teeth. And when, you, when you, you have a level of success like that, there's, there are so many things that are that are connected in that and to be young um, and, and learn from Mike to learn from people like 
Pete Carroll, even though he was a coach, to learn about organization, to learn about culture, learn about the nuances of leadership was, was tremendous. I did all of this while being a graduate student. Uh, I got my master's in, in uh, 2002 and I got my doctorate degree in 2005. And so working full time and uh, going to school was, was challenging, but it prepared me um, for where I am today. In 2010, I had the opportunity to go to the University of Oklahoma and work for Joe Castiglione. Um, a fantastic opportunity forced me to stretch myself professionally. Um, definitely a culture shock from Los Angeles. Uh, but I learned so much uh, from Joe in that experience. In 2013, had uh, the opportunity to, to, to be an AD, to be an athletics director um, in Los Angeles, uh, in the San Fernando Valley at Cal State Northridge. Um, I felt strongly that I could transform that place, elevate it, possibly get to the NC2A tournament. Hey coach, let me interrupt you for a minute because I always yeah. like to know how, how you feel uh, when, when you rise to another level. I meant to ask you that about basketball. When you got that athletic director position, how did you feel? I felt like it was, it, it was, it was my time uh, to prove that I was worthy. I felt like it was an opportunity to uh, demonstrate and execute a lot of the things that Mike Garrett taught me, that Joe Castiglione taught me, um, and some of my other mentors down the line. Um, I felt fortunate because it's not many African American uh, ADs who get the opportunity to be in the chair of being an AD. And I felt like I had to work harder than anybody else. And um, that's, that, that's really how I felt. And how about your family? You know, my family, we're from California. So, it, I mean, <laughs> they, they, you know, the chance to transition from, from Norman, Oklahoma, to get back to Los Angeles was attractive. Um, and everyone was happy. And uh, they, they transitioned well, you know, back my wife. She's from San Francisco Bay Area, um, so she was closer back to her her uh, her parents and and her friends. And the roots, the roots, the roots, and it was you know it just made made my life that much easier. All right, so uh, moving on because you did tell me you've got some other obligations. Uh, talk about UMKC and what you're bringing to the table mm -hmm. and what's your outlook, and if you want to divulge some of your plans. And um, you're taking over for, uh, from another African-American AD, and uh, what kind of culture do you plan to create there? Well, first and foremost, uh, credit to, to, to Carla, you know, for what she did um, previous to, to me being hired. Um, you know, being in Kansas City, you know, my, I, I, I see the city as, as uh, you know, we're sitting on acres of diamonds, acres of diamonds. You have um, access, you can make Kansas City whatever you want it to be. You got exact the mundo. But yeah, whatever you want it to be. Um, it's a passionate sports town, as, as I alluded to earlier. Um, and we, UMKC is, is, is right in that core, right in that core, close to the plaza. We have more access to wealth, less than, less than a mile away from us. I would say you in the epicenter of, epicenter. of the, the, the whole, epicenter. the whole city. Yeah. 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 And so 68% of our alumni live, um, in, in the Kansas city region. And it's a matter of elevating, we call ourselves Kansas City when we rebrand Kansas City Athletics. Kansas City Athletics, elevating 
uh, getting to a point to where we can beat at Wichita State. You know, that's a tough we, order, Coach. We could be. It's a tough order, but but it could be done. They were they were us 12, 13 years ago. They hired Greg. Well, that's and and and, and the right and got person this, now can make it happen. They can. They yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So getting to that point to where we could be that Creighton, that Wichita State, that premier mid-major um, school. And we have people in Kansas City who are proud Rubes, uh, but more importantly, proud uh, Kansas Cityans who want to see our program be successful. But it's all about how do you get them engaged? Okay, how do you get them to come to a game and, 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 and buy season tickets? You know, how do you create strategic facility projects and, and to where there's an emotional attachment to it? How do you talk about sort of the elephant in the room? Okay, so I've learned that, and I know there's history with the municipal arena, and we had some time there, and now we're back at Swinney, and uh, we have plans to, at some point, expand that. Now, are we going to do it all at once? No. But going back to the Summit League was, in my opinion, the right thing to do for our fans. Now, now we can, and our fans have more an affinity for that league, um, and we need to establish that. But there's some things we have to do. You know, there's some plans we have to do from a budget uh, perspective, from, from facilities, from scholarships, and the way that we approach recruiting. So if we look at our premier sport, which is men's basketball, that's no disrespect to the other sports that we sponsor. We have to keep our kids home. And we have to find a way to build a fence around this city and build the connections and build the relationships so that we can get the top prospect out of Kansas City any given year. That's going to take time. Right. That's it's like the Dorito Award winner. You, you coming over to UMKC. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, right. I, I'm, I totally uh, agree with you in that uh, respect. And I think we talked off camera a little bit about that that mm -hmm. Kansas City is a hotbed for basketball. Uh, and they have uh, some good players. Now, how do you entice them to see the value that UMKC uh, brings? You, you, you know, I think um, when I first took the job, it was uh, selling the invisible initially. Now we have some tangible signs of growth and elevation. What we've done in Swinney with rebranding our court, we have that North Lobby where we can tell the story of our program. We have some exterior graphics highlighting our student athletes and coaches outside of Swinney. Our level of customer service has been elevated. Um, our ticket sales, we're finally getting students to come to the games. Uh, we are our, our Casey's crew, which is our kids club, you know, is, is over a thousand right now. So we, we have the plan in place and um, we, we can't use this pandemic um, to say, well, let's just stop this momentum. We have to find a way to use this as a season of opportunity to continue that to continue to have conversations like the ones we're having now about how do we continue to elevate? How do we, you know, peel that onion back? And then how do we, how do we, how do we debunk these uh, myths and, and these, these attitudes about UMKC? Well, I think, I think because you're there now, uh, it's a fresh start. It's not yeah. like you are coming out the clear blue sky. No disrespect to Carla, but you are coming from a tradition. You're coming from a tradition of winning, not just uh, being a coach. Uh, and, and, and it didn't start 
with Oklahoma. It started with you coming right out of high school and sure. Sure. going to that next level and that next level and that next level. Sure. And uh, this is what my mentors, uh, and, and from me being 68, uh, if you've never been there, you really don't know how to get there to a degree. Sure. If you've been there, and that's in anything in life, uh, you have a better chance of getting back there. Because I've had like three or four falls in my life, lost everything, was a millionaire, got homeless. Uh, but if you know how to get there, and it's, it's all about hard work. <laughs> it, it, it's no secret to it. No, it, it, it it's about it, hard it, work, persistency, and making some, some, some good choices also. Sure, and it's about relationships. That has that has one hundred percent. That has at least fifty percent. Fifty percent. How? But I think that that the uh, atmosphere in Kansas City, the business community at large, uh, the political community at large, they would love to see UMKC at the top of the pyramid. Yeah. And it's, um, it's, a, it's a deserving city, you know, to, to have that. One of the critical things that I felt was, was important to do uh, when I fir first took the job was to meet 100 donors, 100 fans, 100 alums in 100 days. So I was Delicious. community. I was out and it, it, it wasn't just in the plaza either. Okay. I went over there. I went on truths, across truths. I met with uh, Dr. Bedell with, you know, KC Public Schools. I went, I met with Dan Clemens, you know, superintendent of North Kansas City Schools. I went around and met a lot of different people um, who I felt were critical, who could help me carry out, you know, the, the, the mission of trying to elevate this, this great program. Hey, hey uh, Coach, Tell me this, uh, we've talked about basketball. Uh, what do you have planned for, because as I told you, we used to cover uh, uh, your teams, uh, the soccer, the volleyball, and the softball. Has there been any, and, and let's talk a little bit about women's basketball before we get on to that. Okay, okay, we, we can do that. Um, uh, J.C. Hoyt has, it, it, in her third year, um, has done nothing short of phenomenal. I mean, the first time in school history that we've advanced to the NC2A tournament. Didn't now, even know that. Yeah, yeah. No, we didn't get the opportunity to play, but that's huge for us. What she's done with recruiting, what she's done just in terms of um, marketing, branding her her um, her her program. Her program. In, yeah, yeah, our program and being relevant is is tremendous, and we're hoping that she stays with us uh, for a long time. Uh, to your question about soccer, um, after men's and women's basketball, um, the people that I came across, you know, in in the sports community, um, and based on the data, it told me that soccer was a huge opportunity. And um, I felt that it was important that we build a relationship or even better, a partnership with Sporting KC. And that's what we did. And so, you know, I, I had a meeting with, with Jake Reed, the CEO, and we sat down, I spelled out my vision. Um, I had a meeting with Peter Vermees and, and spelled out the vision and felt like it was important for us to also recruit high talent from their academy, but also throughout Kansas City. Now, that's going to take a commitment as well. You know, we, we need to upgrade our, our soccer facility, and we've taken a step towards that with um, returfing our field, which was huge, was, which was a, a multi- We, we, we talked, we, you touched on this, but it was briefly and yep. uh, your budget, 
and your donors. Uh, how important is that right now, having that relationship and making uh, your financial supporters understand, I can take this to the next level, but these are some of the tools that I need, and it all revolves around the king's currency. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's well said. Um, well, when I uh, took over the job, you know, the, the bloodline of your your uh, athletics department is your annual fund. Um, so we started the Rue Athletic Fund, and we started with with 105 donors. And in a year, we went from 105 donors to 528 donors Excellent. that contributed. That, that contribute to our program. Um, and in terms of major gifts, we were fortunate enough to get a $800,000 gift from the Sunderland Foundation, uh, which was uh, important for our initial facility phase with our North Lobby and rebranding our court. And we have some other plans to uh, expand our strength conditioning space and also address nutrition. Um, but <clears throat> It, it's all going to come down to 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 donor relations and them believing in our plan and having a business mindset when we're communicating that. It, it not going in and saying, will, "Will you help us?" Well, we need to talk about what's your return on investment. ROI. That, 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 I talked to that, you about my brother-in-law. Uh, that's what he always used to. Tell me, it's got to be ROI. Yeah, yeah, and that's and 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 that's what it comes down to. But but it, is it possible? No question about it. No question about it. Uh, you know, every day, number one, I'm I'm grateful um, to God that I'm that that I'm in Kansas City. I'm grateful for this opportunity um, because I feel I, I I firmly believe that I'm here on assignment. I like on, that coach. I like that. I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm here on assignment and I have every intention to fulfill that assignment. And we just got to take it one day at a time. Hey coach in wrapping up this interview, uh, what would you parting words that you would have for the Kansas city community? Well, yeah, I would say first of all, I want to I, I want to thank my uh, my chancellor uh, Molly Agrawal for granting me the opportunity. Um, I also want to thank the the board of curators um, who also uh, was a part of the hiring process. Um, and there's people like Kathy Nelson from the Kansas City Sports Commission and people like Gary Forsey who um, have also been uh, great mentors for me. So that's, that's number one. I also want to thank um, the donors, you know, those 528 that signed up who believed in our mantra and our philosophy of comprehensive excellence. Um, but beyond that, I would like to say that um, I really appreciate the city embracing me as an outsider. But an outsider that has the best interest of the city in regards to building a premier mid-major program that the city is proud of. And uh, this doesn't have anything to do with, this is a city that we, and when I say we, that's, that's African-Americans, that's, that's, um, well, that's whites, that it doesn't matter. It, it's all of us in this thing together. Kansas City. Kansas City. It's, it's about Kansas City. So it's not just one demographic. It's all of us together in this. Yeah, well, hey, Coach, it's a pleasure having you on the show. And we surely look forward at Cascade Media Group and Cascade Sports to do everything within our power to help you succeed in your mission to take us to the top. Well, I certainly appreciate that, uh, Mr. Nelson, and, and I hope that we can continue 
to have a dialogue and, and to stay in contact. And I can continue to update you on some of the, the uh, initiatives that we have uh, in place and see how maybe you and I can build some synergies together. Excellent. But well, as we always end our programs, when you invest in your community, you're really just investing in yourself. Good night. This program is brought to you by the City of Fountains Coaches Association.